evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jo Brand. In the news this week, in Coventry, a small manufacturing firm is boosted by a high-profile customer for its new arse elbow separator. <laughs> It's 27 hours into the longest ever final of musical chairs and all Britain's exhausted contestant has to do to clinch the title of world champion is to sit on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and after one garden shed burglary too many, the Godalming neighbourhood watch group gets serious. <laughs> With Ian tonight is a comedian who says all the people who work at the BBC are really nice. Really? That's odd. All the people I ever worked with at the BBC told me they couldn't stand you. <laughs> Please welcome Humphrey Carr. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a comedy writer who recently created a new version of The Lady Killers, where a sweet, innocent old lady finds herself surrounded by a gang of misfits. I know the feeling. <laughs> Please welcome Graham Linehan. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Humphrey, take a look at this. Well, it's Abu Qatada, surrounded by a miasma of hate. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, he's staying to become the next Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> uh, that's the backlog of cases. Yep, you're a mug. <laughs> this is a week where the government was very keen to get back its reputation for competence and it didn't go so well. <laughs> we announced we were going to get rid of Abu Qatada. He's off on Tuesday and then today we find out, oh, we can't because um, he's put in an appeal. And the Home Office said he had to appeal by Monday night and the European Court of Human Rights said, no, it's Tuesday night. And no one appears to have checked. It's a classic diary error. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. Which day is the 17th? Monday, I think. I'll check when I get home. <laughs> well, the correct answer, actually, is when the court officials who actually set the deadline say it is. <laughs> and but I uh, notice his lawyers only put the appeal in one hour before the deadline. They just love living on the edge. <laughs> I imagine there's not a lot of fun being a human rights lawyer. You've got, to, <laughs> you've got to live vicariously when you have the chance. <laughs> what Abu Qatar has done wrong is he's not got the right sort of PR behind him. <laughs> if you could make him seem a bit more lovable, people might not be quite what? so keen. So I think, get the Cockneys to like him first. Mm. Abu Qatar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'd like to have my own theme tune as well, because I, I think we should all have one. <laughs> what would yours be? I'd like to have the sound of broken glass, followed by a high-pitched female voice saying, Leave it, Dave. He's not worth it. <laughs> Do you know how Abu Qatada <laughs> has, um, has been described in the press? Well, he's been described as Al-Qaeda's top man in Britain. The Times described Qatada as radical Muslim cleric, the Sun as hate preacher, and the Daily Telegraph as Mr Qatada. <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Human Rights previously ruled that Abu Qatada couldn't be sent home to Jordan as there was a likelihood that evidence obtained by torture would be used against him. According to the Times, the Jordanian government said they would bend over backwards anyone who accused them of torturing prisoners. So, <laughs> I'm reassuring, isn't it? And what have Labour MPs accused Theresa May of doing? Not knowing which day of the week it is. <laughs> They've accused her of dragging her heels. And here's some evidence... <laughs> Very to, good. Yeah, here's some evidence to back it up, guys. Because of that, we missed the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, what has the Libyan military commander, Abdul Hakim Belhaj, accused Jack Straw of doing? Sending him off to Gaddafi to be tortured. Yeah, he was basically a gift, Gaddafi. Um, Blair and Straw needed a present for their favourite dictator. You know, maybe they'd get one in return, oil rights or 
I don't know, a bung when you leave office. Um, <laughs> so, ah, that won't go in. <laughs> Extraordinary accusation the, there. Extraordinary, <laughs> suggesting that Mr Blair has made a huge amount of money since leaving a rather bloodstained period when he was in charge. <laughs> yes. I do hope that doesn't get through. Yes. Um, <laughs> this man is suing Straw personally. Yes. And he might win. So we could find out what happened in the Blair years. Which is quite exciting for some of us. <laughs> well, I've actually had my house extraordinarily rendered. Um, <laughs> or stone clad, as the builder called it. Now, the um, rendition of Bell Hadge took place just before Tony Blair met Gaddafi for the deal in the desert. According to the Sunday Times, he had no recollection of the Bell Hadge case and went on to ask, what war in Iraq? <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, in other terrorism news, I'm yes. sorry, we have to, we have to plough this furrow a little further, not yeah. for long. I'm all for it. We'll have a big knob on in a minute. Um, <laughs> in... What, what's that? <laughs> I, Paul, I don't know, I just said knob to lighten the atmosphere. I know. <laughs> Oh, it's it not normally, I thought like a marathon. Oh, that was all one word. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only way I would watch the Olympics. What? what? If there was a knob on. Oh, I see. <laughs> Uh, in other terrorism news, I'm yes, not, yeah. not going to do this for long, but a Taliban no. commander has been arrested. Yeah. Uh, was this as a result of a complicated undercover operation? The answer to that must surely be no. The answer surely is no. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed Ashan walked up to a checkpoint, held up a wanted poster bearing his own face and demanded the $100 finder's oh. fee. That is a classic mistake. <laughs> you should have held out for 200. Yeah. <laughs> well, an official declared, clearly the man is an imbecile. <laughs> How are we getting on with the noise of the broken glass and <laughs> stop it, Dave, he's not worth it for my um, noise? How's that coming along? Oh, yeah, on? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Is that coming along? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> who would like to see the next president of the World Bank in action? Oh, yes. Yeah, no, I, w I wouldn't. <laughs> His name is Jim Yong Kim, and Obama has just announced his appointment as head of the World Bank. It's in safe hands. Here he is. I've the time of my life, and I never felt this way before. And I swear, it's the truth, and I owe it all to you. Very good. Half man, half filler box. <laughs> yeah, look at him, a real banker. Yeah. <laughs> He's down with the interest rate. This is hot tonight. Go, go, be green, go, go. Yeah. What's he in charge of? He is in charge of the World Bank. He's in charge of all the money. <laughs> So, Abba Katada has got his own theme tune. Yes. And uh, now we've got lined up for you what you suggested earlier. Oh, really? What was yours again? Well, I'd like to hear the sound of a goat doing Frank Sinatra record. <laughs> Singing my way while being pushed through Swansea in a pram. <laughs> Have you got it? <laughs> I'd like my theme tune to be a lorry driving through Cornwall. <laughs> On a Wednesday. <laughs> Have you got it? So, this is the latest attempt to deport Abu Qatada. Explaining his decision to jail Qatada, the judge said, there is a real possibility he will abscond. Yes, <laughs> the last thing we want him to do is leave the country. <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> Theresa May is looking for ways of speeding up Katada's extradition and says she will be examining the processes and procedures used in Italy, where they're much tougher. Any trouble on your on the first cruise ship out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about his past, the son found a school friend who told them Katada was a normal young man. He was interested in girls and listened to Pink Floyd. So very normal, except with him, the girls got stoned after they listened to Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Graham, take a look at this. 
Oh, right, this is uh, obviously 100 days to go. These are a lot of visitors at the Olympic Stadium. There we are. Well, what the bloody hell's going on here? What is this? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a very bad camera that's been used by the BBC. You can't quite see what's happened. Um, this is the Olympic Games, 100 days to go, 98 days to go, 97 days to go. Or if you're watching on Dave, three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what an extraordinary games they turned out to be. <laughs> So, yeah, this is the news that it's not yes. long to the Olympics, yeah. uh, or as it's known in The Independent, the 11 billion tax-funded advertising campaign for some of the world's <laughs> worst companies. <laughs> <laughs> and does anyone know why that VT was pixelated at the end? It's copyright, isn't it? That's right. Almost it's... everything. So beneath that pixelating, I think, there are the Olympic rings. Yeah. And in some cultures, are the rings considered pornographic? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's under there. They look like rings from here. Are you going to unpixelate it in an act of daring? I'm not actually allowed to show you, because if I did, I would get sent to Jordan with... <laughs> <laughs> so... No, the V2 is pixelated because we're not allowed to show the Olympic logo because it comes under the remit of two Acts of Parliament preventing misuse of Olympic logos. Well, I mean, we could have got permission, but I, I, I'd have had to have jumped through all sorts of hoops. <laughs> so, um... It was very heavily pleased in China, wasn't it? Didn't they go into the toilets and the, uh, if you get a, um, the, one of those hand dryers, they have to put... St put sticky tape over the, uh, the name of the company who do the hand dryers. Oh, really? Like They're really actually going to be doing that here, yes. Yes. In the toilets, soap dispensers, wash basins. And you're not allowed to take in any drink or product That's that it. isn't sponsored. Yes, yes. Which is going to be tough for the Queen, isn't it? <laughs> Why? <laughs> She's a brand. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I thought you meant she liked a McDonald's burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's having a full Adidas tracksuit run <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. Also, the athletes aren't allowed to tweet. I mean, there's, like, a, a really hardcore uh, guidelines about what they're allowed to say on the internet, about what they're doing, what they're... Like, they can't say, oh, I'm so thirsty, I love water. That's... It has to be like, I love super action mega water. <laughs> <laughs> but it also is there something about sort of local businesses, like the, the Olympic Kebab Grill or something, that, that's, that's been forced to change its name in case people think, oh, I wonder if that's the official kebab shop of the Olympic Games. <laughs> Absolutely. The Olympic Cafe in Stratford was mm. told he couldn't call his restaurant Cafe Olympic and he'd have to change the sign. Now, it would have cost him three grand to change it, so according to the Newham Recorder, he decided to make the necessary alterations with minimal expense. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Well, um, he's painted the O out, so if you have trouble finding it, the Café Olympic is excellent value, and it's at 61 West Ham Lane, Stratford, <laughs> G15, 4PH. Now, there's all sorts of... Do you have to book? <laughs> <laughs> you probably do now. <laughs> um, Little Chef were told they should consider changing the name of their Olympic breakfast. No, really? Yes, as it was unhelpful to the 2012 Olympics. Quite unhelpful describing it as breakfast. <laughs> there it is. Oh, well, look, that's, that's magnificent effort there by the Bacon, great British eggs, runner. Bacon, eggs, mushroom, tomatoes, <laughs> sausage, potatoes and beans, or as I call it, the modern heptathlon. Do <laughs> um, <laughs> you know who will be unable to accept his invitation to the opening ceremony? It's me. Ah. Oh. Uh, I'm going to be washing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Did that take all day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I've no... Who, who can't come? It's the Is... Who's drummer, Keith Moon. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. His manager was asked by the opening ceremony organisers if he would take part in a reunion with the other members of the band, <laughs> despite having been dead for 34 years. <laughs> Hasn't stopped the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> would put it past Keith, though. Did you no, see, that, that, did see that documentary where he was so out of it that he was playing the drums mm -hmm. and uh, he just starts kind of nodding starts nodding off and a roadie had to crawl onto the stage and inject his heel with amphetamines and he just kind of went <laughs> came back to life <laughs> like the rabbit with a long lasting battery yeah. <laughs> BBC coverage of the Olympics will no longer include what? rings <laughs> no. Well, sadly, the coverage of the Olympics will no longer include CFAX, which was shut down this week. I found out that Diana died uh, on CFAX. I still don't know how she died, because the second page hasn't loaded yet. <laughs> 
Well, this is the marking of 100 days to go till the Olympics start, and even more excitingly, 116 till it's all over. Uh, and then we can sit back and enjoy the hundreds of years of legacy, which is Lord Coe's fancy word for debt. <laughs> um, the closing ceremony will feature songs which represent different eras of British music. According to The Independent, an invitation to the Sex Pistols to represent punk has been declined as it clashes with the filming of Johnny Rotten's latest butter advert. <laughs> and so to round two, it's a welcome return to the picture spin quiz. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. That's Pippa Middleton, with a gun. So it is. <laughs> She's not the one holding the gun, though, is she? Uh, it's a nicely focused picture for someone that's about to be shot, isn't mm. it? Yeah. The this name's was, uh, Middleton. Where was it? Was this in Paris? Um, we, we presume it's a, a uh, mock uh, gun. Point. Well, it's, it's a bit unclear, because someone in the car worked for the, the gun manufacturing company called Heckler & Koch. Heckler & Koch. <laughs> Sounds like a rather rough vasectomy clinic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually I think... had an experience like that at the comedy <laughs> store. Oh, yeah, you, 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 hardly, you couldn't go back over the second half, did you? <laughs> no. This was what? This was the weekend. This was considered slightly distasteful given that uh, recent events in France. He got this gun out from the glove compartment while they were driving around mm -hmm. and then waved it at the paparazzi. It was a sort of good humoured threat. <laughs> you might die. <laughs> what could the punishment be if the gun turns out to be real? Seven years. Seven years in prison for all parties involved. Oh. What, everyone in the car? Yeah. Really? Oh, you're looking really chirpy now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, that, that would be a first. We'd have to extradite Pippa. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently the case is being dealt with uh, at, according to the Express, a very high level. So, Dad. way over Sarkozy's head, then. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the news that Pippa Middleton has been driving through Paris with a French playboy brandishing a gun. So now it's Pippa's turn to be upstaged by an arse. <laughs> Kate and Pippa's brother James has also been revealed to be running a saucy cake business. He insists he's a self-made man and recently said, nothing is handed to anyone on a plate. Well, he clearly knows nothing about cakes, then. <laughs> uh, speaking of cakes, the Swedish culture minister was in trouble this week after being photographed cutting into an allegedly racist cake. <laughs> the yes. cake was designed to highlight the abuse of women and was shaped like a naked black woman. Honestly, even Mr Kipling stopped making those <laughs> in the 1970s. <laughs> so, fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Somebody has invented a TV channel for dogs where the dogs have nothing to do and you think, I wish that dog could watch a TV programme and entirely devoted to what dogs like and somebody's done it. So it's basically it's sort of dogs looking at pictures of other dogs, balls being chased, sticks being thrown across rivers, loads of trees, dogs just look at it and dogs are happy. It's dog TV all the way. It is indeed. <laughs> um... <laughs> According to Sky News, Dog TV is an eight-hour block of on-demand cable TV programme. On-demand by who? <laughs> <laughs> a Labrador insists on watching <laughs> Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Before launching the channel, yeah. scientists conducted hundreds of hours of research into what dogs like to see and hear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any idea what they might have They're concluded? very fond of David Dimbleby. <laughs> Particularly Jack Russell, they like him very much. But the, the smaller the dog, um, the more they lean towards Andrew Marr. <laughs> I must just say this about Andrew Marr. I've said it hundreds of times yeah. before, so if you've heard it, you ignore me. But I love there was a description of Andrew Marr that said Andrew Marr looks like Martin Clunes with some of the air let out of him. <laughs> Do what programmes are going to appear on Dog TV? Yes, a load of made-up programmes <laughs> with dog puns in the title. <laughs> Here's two. Britain's well, Got Lamp Posts. Britain's Got Lamp Posts. <laughs> are these All real? right, sorry. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> what about Down Boy Abbey? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> The dog channel takes its responsibilities very seriously. Only after the nine o'clock watershed does it show any bottom sniffing. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. 
this one. Mm. This is a town in Austria that has a very unfortunate name. That asterisk and that letter, upside down letter should give you some idea of what it is. So this is the Austrian village which is holding a vote this week on whether to change its name. Uh, do you know what's prompted the name to it? <laughs> is it that the name is <laughs> <laughs> It only became a problem during the Second World War when American soldiers came in and started giggling all the time. <laughs> Um, well, apparently some traditionalists want the 16th century name for the village reinstated, which was Fugging. <laughs> uh, and what's the potential problem with a name change? I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, according to the mayor, Franz Meindl, the only problem is we need all of the <laughs> residents to agree. <laughs> <laughs> The residents have been told to lighten up and cash in by Jürgen Stoll, who runs a guest house in the Swiss village of Wank. <laughs> Mr Stoll added, the Wank guest house is full all year round. <laughs> Single rooms only, of course. <laughs> it's time now for the odd one out round. Uh, just one between you this week. Mitt Romney's dog, a series of ads claiming homosexuality is curable, a pheasant in Gloucestershire and a traffic cop in Vietnam. Uh, well, that poster, not gay, ex-gay, post-gay, proud, get over it, that was on the side of a bus. Or it was going to be and then Boris banned it. Yeah. That traffic cop, there was a story about him jumping on a bus trying to give it a ticket. So oh, he yeah. was on the side of a bus. Mitt Romney's dog was run over and stuck to the side of a bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he went on a bus, he, the dog. He put, he put, Mitt Romney put his dog in a crate mm. on top of his car yeah. and drove it many hundreds of miles. Mm. Oh, right, so it's not a bus, it's a moving vehicle. Mm. Yeah, this pheasant is actually the official driver for the 2012 Olympics. <laughs> I think this pheasant is one of those birds that sort of regularly does a commute from, say, Nottingham to sort of Lincoln or something like that, you know, so I think it's a regular thing. And I think the post is the only thing that's not been on a moving yeah, vehicle. Yeah, we were getting there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're all kids. right. You're all right. Yes, it's oh, the... Oh, it's, it's on the Lib Dem conference. Come oh. on. <laughs> I wish it was. Because <laughs> I've got a soft spot for Clegg. Really? Yeah, face down on Hackney Marshes. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yes, although you weren't quite right about the pheasant, but anyway, the Vietnamese traffic cop was uh, Lieutenant Man Fan, and... Uh, Man Fan. Man Fan, I know. <laughs> talking of gay buses. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm week... not gay, I'm just a man fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the clip of him went viral after he was spotted clinging onto the front of a bus in Vietnam. Uh, who wants to see Lieutenant Fan in action? Oh, yes, yes. please. Yes. yes, here we go. Wow. It looks like an on the buses dad's army mashup. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone catch what he was shouting there? Stop filming me. <laughs> <laughs> well, according it, to the... When's the next request stop? <laughs> <laughs> according to the Times, he was heard yelling, call the police. <laughs> <laughs> a peasant in Gloucestershire survived a 40 mile trip after getting hit by a car and wedged in the grill. The pheasant has made a full recovery. OK, they've all travelled on the outside of a vehicle, apart from the anti-gay advertising campaign, which wasn't allowed to appear on the outside of buses. The Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, banned the ads, having always been a champion of gay women, or as he calls them, a challenge. <laughs> Mitt Romney has been criticised for once driving his car with a family dog on the roof, or as his dog called it, the roof. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in a similar incident, George W. Bush also put his dog on the roof before travelling. Sadly, that was on Air Force One. <laughs> a Vietnamese traffic cop was seen clinging to the front of a speeding bus. Here he is, as we've seen. The bus was driven by Fung Hong Phuong, and was stopped by traffic cop Ang Wen Man Fan. It was captured on video by Ang On Tightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> the 
time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Blaze. The lighter magazine, if it was about something interesting, it would no doubt be heavier. <laughs> and we start with flat kick arm with nipple rivet and hexagonal nut what? Equals one hell of a night. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. What? Hexagonal <laughs> nut chocolate. <laughs> Flat kick arm with nipple rivet, and it sounds like, it sounds like a good night out, actually. <laughs> um, it's flat kick arm with nipple rivet and hexagonal nut, a pleasant surprise. No. Uh, next, man wearing umbrella hat, what? Still a virgin at 44. <laughs> <laughs> Has umbrella handles sticking out of his bottom. <laughs> uh, the answer is man wearing umbrella hat struck by lightning twice. <laughs> Uh, this is Matt Wilkes of the Isle of Wight, who bought an umbrella hat on eBay and was hit twice by lightning within minutes. According to The Sun, he was going to a fancy dress pub crawl. Not sure what he was going as, presumably a twat. <laughs> and finally, shock as what comes back from the dead? Anguidicum. <laughs> the answer is hamster. What as news does he the... have of the life beyond the veil? <laughs> Golden wheels. Golden wheels? Yes. <laughs> Run into the light. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> After being buried, the hamster dug himself out of his grave. This story has upset a lot of children, but if you're watching kids, please don't worry, it can't happen with Jimmy Savile. <laughs> So, the final scores are Paul and Graham have five, and Ian and Humphrey have seven. Oh, uh, but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Oh, oh it's a freeze frame. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. David Attenborough lives over there. Let's see how he likes it. <laughs> On which note we say thank you to our panellists in Hislop and Humphrey Carr, Paul Merton and Graham Linehan and I leave you with news that the Japanese government announces that after the meltdown the rivers round the Fukushima nuclear plant are once more full of salmon. <laughs> Just as he thinks he's found the perfect picnic spot there's a nasty surprise for Nick Griffin. <laughs> And as staff at London Zoo unveil their new charity calendar, there are concerns that Miss December may not get past the censors. <laughs> Good night. Lee's not budging until there's a knock at the door. So much for his lazy weekend. Not going out. Coming next on BBC One.